All right, so today I want to introduce you to the True Ghost Ball Python. It's a pretty complicated project. It actually consists of two recessive genes, the ghost and the azanthic. And the ghost can be pretty tricky just by itself. Essentially what the ghost does is it really reduces the contrast of the snake, gives it kind of a creamy appearance if you actually hit the visual with two genes of the ghost. And the ghost by itself can be really variable. I've actually seen some ghosts that are almost as bright yellow as some of the brightest pastels. I've actually seen some ghosts that are really bright orange and I've actually seen some ghosts that almost have a color kind of like a normal ball python that's kind of kind of faded out almost like a creamy color from the addition of the ghost. And to add to the complexity you actually have different lines of ghosts. So for example you actually have the the ghost, the yellow ghost, the orange ghost, the butterscotch ghost. You have all these different ghosts and some of them are compatible and some of them are not compatible meaning if you have two incompatible lines and you bring them together you'll actually get normal ball pythons that are het for each line of ghosts so you definitely have to know which line you're working with and then if you actually take ghost and work it into a xanthic you get the true ghost and the thing with the xanthic that's tricky too because there's multiple lines of a xanthic which are not compatible so if you actually breed two incompatible lines together the two different lines of a xanthic you'll actually get double heads that are het for each line of azanthic. So let me tell you, if you're actually breeding true ghosts together, you definitely have to know which line of ghost you have and which line of azanthic so you can actually breed two true ghosts together. So today I want to jump over to the internet and I want to show you how to make a true ghost and some of the complexities trying to produce more true ghost ball pythons. All right, so I'm going to jump over here on MorphMarket.com, and I want to start with this snake right here. This is what one version of the ghost looks like. And let me tell you, if you're investing into a ghost project, you definitely have to know which lines of ghosts that that snake is compatible with if you're actually breeding your ghost. And it's kind of interesting over here at Morph Market, a lot of people would kind of put their ghosts under this category of the kind of the, just the common ghosts that are all compatible. You can actually come over here and see a whole bunch of different colors. You can see some yellow ones, some orange ones, some that look almost like a normal, and they're all listed under this category that we call ghost, most of which are all compatible with each other. And most people will actually say that the ghost is compatible with the bulk of the orange ghost as well. So most of the orange ghosts are actually compatible with the ghost. So if you breed them together, you'll actually get a visual ghost. But I've actually seen some people on some of the reptile forums Someone actually bought an orange ghost, bred it to their ghost, and ended up with double heads. So I've actually seen in some cases where the orange ghost is not compatible with certain lines of just the, the common ghost, which it can get pretty confusing. And a lot of times people don't actually specify what lines of ghosts that they have, so it can get really confusing. Versus if you had, you know, for example, like the azanthics, people always know exactly what line of azanthic they have versus the ghosts, the lines can kind of blur as far as if they're compatible or not. And I'd say in most cases what you want to do, you want to come over here to Morph Market and look at the description underneath the snake. And a lot of times it'll actually give more information about if that snake is compatible with the common line of ghost or the common orange ghost, which is kind of all clumped together, or if it's completely separate and incompatible. So you definitely want to know. And a lot of times what you can actually do, uh, what I would actually recommend is if you're buying any ghost at all, I would definitely talk to the reader, you know, talk to them in person or email them or call them on the phone and say, hey, is this actually compatible with the most common lines of ghost and orange ghost? ghost. So here is the azanthic, the other component in the true ghost. So both of these are recessive, so it's a little bit harder to work the azanthic into the ghost to get a visual. And essentially what the azanthic is, it's a, it pretty much strips all the color from the ball python and you end up with a black and white and silver snake in the best examples that I really like. I've actually seen a lot of VPI azanthics. A lot of them can be kind of browned out. As a matter of fact, I've actually seen some people where they say their azanthics kind of have this silvery color is a hatchling and as they age and mature they tend to get more and more brown color 
in the Azanthix. As a matter of fact, I've actually seen some Azanthix that hardly even look like an Azanthic as an adult, which is kind of crazy. I've actually seen jeans you can work into Azanthic to really increase the contrast and the brightness. For example, you can actually work fire or pastel into an Azanthic and really increase the the, the white in the background and you can actually really clean up the sides and increase the contrast especially as the age of matured we're working those jeans in makes them look really impressive so here's what happens if you take the vpi azanthic and work in two jeans of the ghost essentially what you get is you get the true ghost take a look at this and this is a pretty hard combination to actually hit so this is the, the azanthic with the ghost on top of the azanthic so if you actually look at the, the price on this one, it's kind of interesting on the prices. So this is a pretty hard combination to get hit. This actually sold for $1,100 back in 2018. And it seems like the prices have actually increased pretty much across the board since 2018, which I think is kind of interesting. So if you were to actually decide to try to get into a true ghost project and say, all right, I want to start from scratch. And what I want to do is I want to buy a a ghost hatchling and I want to buy an azanthic hatchling and I want to produce a true ghost I want to show you how difficult and how much time it could potentially take to make a true ghost I actually brought it up over here on the genetic wizard so what you'd actually have to do is you'd have to buy an azanthic and a ghost and then you'd have to raise them up until the female is ready to breed and that usually takes about three years before you can breed your female for the first time so it'd be three years and when you produce your first hatchlings they would all look like normal ball pythons and they'd be double head for a xanthic and ghost and actually came over here into the genetic wizard plugged in head a xanthic and head ghost you'd need two of the double heads you'd breed them together and then what you'd actually produce down here you produce all these different combinations you produce normals you produce ghosts you produce a xanthics and then you get the double hats and single hats all all these different combinations and then way down in the bottom one out of 16 you would actually produce the true ghost the visual azanthic ghost so if you actually kind of wrap your head around how long it would take for this so if you bought the hatchlings it would take you three years for those hatchlings to breed for the first time to produce your double hats and then your double hats uh, you'd actually have to hold back a male and a female and then it would take at least another three years So you're up to six years before you can breed your double heads together And then you'd actually if you look at the odds one in 16 You'd probably have to breed them for at least two years before you can actually hit this combination so you figure if you have actually have eight eggs per clutch and you actually have two clutches that would be that would be two years so you're looking at you know eight years before you can get your first true ghost of course if you actually had two true ghosts and you bred them together you get a whole clutch of true ghosts as a matter of fact if you actually got to this point where you produced one male true ghost you could take that and breed it back to your uh double hats to increase your odds that way but let me tell you this could be you you know like a 10 year project starting from the individual recessive genes trying to hit your very first true ghost so that's why the prices can be really high too so one of the best genes that I've found working into the true ghost is the lesser. It's kind of interesting what the lesser does. As a matter of fact, a lot of the combinations with just the ghost by itself, one of my favorites is taking ghost and working it into a lot of dark genes. And a lot of times you'll get kind of a steel gray colored snake, which is kind of the same way working lesser into the true ghost. And the other thing about the lesser is it's actually in the blue eyed leucistic complex. So if you actually have it in your ball python, you have to kind of be careful breeding the lesser in with another blue eyed leucistic gene because 25% of the time you'll actually hit an all white snake that'll completely mask all your other genes in the combination. If you have a really expensive combination with a possible double visual, you definitely want to avoid the all white snake because it'll completely mask it and you won't know if you hit it or not. But here's what happens if you work lesser into your true ghost. Take a look at this. This is pretty amazing. I absolutely love the gray colored ball pythons. It's not really that popular getting ball pythons that kind of have a gray color to them. It's pretty amazing. 
So take a look at this one. This is actually another version of the True Ghost. This is actually the SK, some people call it the TSK line of a Xanthic. So essentially what this is, this is a different line of a Xanthic working it into Ghost, which is kind of interesting. There, I'd say pretty much if you actually come over here to morphmarket.com and type in True Ghost and do a search, what it'll actually bring up is it'll bring up the VPI Ghost instead of the TSK. SK Ghost. So if you're actually looking for other versions of the True Ghost, essentially what you'd have to do is you have to come over here and search for the individual genes, the different versions of those genes that are not compatible. So the other thing is, is if you actually have a TSK Ghost, a, a True Ghost from the TSK line, and you have another True Ghost from the VPI line, and you breed them together, essentially what you get is you would get all ghosts that are double head for the TSK line and the VPI line of a Xanthic, which probably you don't want to mix those up because if you actually hit a visual, if you actually did do like a, a double uh, a double het of two incompatible a Xanthics and you bred them together and then you hit a visual, you wouldn't know which line it came from. So it could be really confusing mixing up your different lines of a Xanthic, unless they look completely different and you can tell them apart. So I actually did a few more searches over here looking for other versions of the true ghosts using different versions of the ghost and the Azanthic. So for example, they actually have the Jolif Azanthic over here and I couldn't find any Jolif Azanthic versions of the true ghost mixing it with ghosts, which is kind of interesting. Here's another one. This is another version of Azanthic. This is the MJ line of Azanthic with the ghost. No versions over here over on more market and take a look at this here you can actually mix it up a little bit more you can actually find the orange ghost mixed with the different versions of the azanthic so you can find the orange ghost or the ghost listed over here on morph market so here's another one. This is actually an orange ghost with the TSK. It's kind of interesting that no one's really working on these. Although some people have actually got close to some of these combinations. Here's another way you can actually look for uh, people working on the true ghost using other versions of the ghost and the Azanthic. What you can actually do is you can come over here and search for the hats. So for example, I actually found this one, the 100% het orange ghost, 100% het VPI Azanthics. So essentially what they're doing is they're going for like the orange true ghost, I guess you would call it with the orange ghost version of the ghost, which is kind of interesting. So some people are actually hitting the double, uh, the, the double hats. As a matter of fact, I was actually over on a live stream and someone said, hey, I have this ball python. It's head for ghost, head for azanthic. What should I breed it to? I'm like, yeah, someone's definitely going for the true ghost with the double hat. The other thing you can actually search for is you can actually search search for, so for example, you can actually search for an orange ghost, het for VPI, or orange ghost, het for another version of VPI, or you can actually kind of flip it the other way, do a visual azanthic that's het for different versions of ghosts to find what people are working on as far as other versions of the true ghost. All right, so what is time for the question of the day? And I Blunts asks, what happens if you have a female maker that produces a male? Will that male be a female maker or a male maker? And that is a very good question. Now, welcome to the very confusing world of male makers and female makers. So it's kind of a really weird anomaly, and it only happens in two genes. Only in the coroglows and the bananas will you see male makers and female makers. And it's only in the males, not in the females. So the females, if you actually took a female banana and bred it to something else. Half the banana offspring would be males, half the banana offspring would be females. But if you actually have a male maker that is a banana, you breed it to something else, all the banana offspring would all be males. You would get no female bananas from that pairing, which is one of the frustrating parts of the project. As a matter of fact, I actually have bananas and coroglows here in my collection. I've been breeding coroglows for years, and my coroglow is a male and it's a male 
male maker so every single Corgolo that I've ever produced has always been a male and from what I've heard I've actually heard that every once in a while you could potentially get a female from a male maker the odds I think are like one in a hundred or something like that you have to breed them for a really long time I have yet to actually I pr probably produce dozens of Corglows here in my collection I have not had a female so if you actually had that combination where you had a male that was a female maker and produced a male it would definitely be a male maker it gets really confusing with the male makers and the female makers so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video